हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू फूड टेक गेक्स होप यू ऑल आर फाइन एंड सेफ एंड योर प्रिपरेशन फॉर द एग्जाम इज गोइंग एट अ गुड स्पीड सो यू ऑल मस्ट बी नोइंग दैट द एग्जामिनेशन फॉर टेक्निकल ऑफिसर एंड फूड सेफ्टी ऑफिसर हैज बीन पोस्टपोन टू फर्स्ट अक्टूबर एंड द एडमिट कार्ड हैज ऑल्सो बीन रिलीज सो प्लीज चेक आउट इफ यू हैवन येट सो फॉर दैट पर्पज वी आर हैविंग दिस सीरीज वेयर वी आर डिस्कसिंग इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विद प्रॉपर एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर द वेरियस पोजिशंस एंड दिस इज आर थर्ड वीडियो इन द सीरीज सो लेट स्टार्ट आर टूडेज क्वेश्चन Question first for the video is fill in the blanks. That is, casein molecule contain the mineral. So here in this question, you have to tell the answer uh, regarding the uh, molecular structure of casein. So in a molecular structure of a casein, there is a presence of one of the mineral in quite significant amount. So the mineral that is present in the uh, casein molecule is phosphorus. and casein contain nearly 0.7 to 0.9 percent of phosphorus and for that being reason it is uh, also known as phosphoprotein so this this question can also be asked in some ways so casein is known as phosphoprotein because of the presence of uh, phosphorus and here it is the given molecular formula of casein where you can see that phosphorus is there in its molecular formula next question which of the following is a complete protein and the options are meat milk egg and cereals so the answer to this question is option a b and c so meat milk and egg all are considered as a complete protein so now let's first discuss uh, about uh, what is protein what is complete protein what is incomplete protein and what are the various examples to these in detail so as you know that proteins are being made up of amino acids like they are the polypeptide chains of amino acids and when we classify the amino acids we can classify them broadly into two categories one being essential amino acids and the non essential amino acids uh the name non essential doesn't mean that they are not important for our body so the name non essential just means that our body is capable of uh, uh manufacturing these amino acids so we do not have to uh, like supply these amino acids via our diet and that is only the reason why they are known as non essential amino acids while on the other hand side uh, the essential amino acids are those amino acids which are important to be supplied to our body through our diet and that is why they are uh, referred to as essential amino acids so uh, on the basis of uh, which food are having essential amino acids we can classify them as complete protein and incomplete protein so the foods which are having uh, all these essential amino acids are considered as complete protein foods while those foods which are lacking in some of the essential amino acids are referred to as uh, incomplete protein foods so the examples to complete protein uh, foods are uh, they are basically animal based so they, it includes meat poultry dairy eggs fish and uh, the soya is the only plant based complete protein so this is a exception otherwise all the other plant based uh, food are incomplete protein because they are lacking in some or the other essential amino acids so out of 9 uh, maybe they are having 6 or 7 but they are not having all the nine essential amino acids and therefore they are known as incomplete protein foods so uh, there is one extra information i would like to add on to this topic that is complementary protein so now uh, as we have said that the cereal as we know that cereals are our staple food so the cereals are incomplete protein foods they are not having all the essential amino acids so to fulfill our uh, daily uh, amino acids or protein requirement what we can do we can combine the different foods like for example one of the example is khichdi so you know that khichdi is a combination of uh, 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 grain and a pulse so you are now complementing both the foods so uh, the essential amino acids which are there in the uh, cereals you are getting that as well and those which are there in legumes you are getting uh, those as well and they both are completing each other so that is uh, known as complementary protein so therefore the answer to this question was option a b and c next question 
for reducing microbial load in cans what is done and the various treatments are being given bromide treatment phosphate treatment ozone treatment manganese treatment a uh, easy question so the uh, ozone treatment is being used for sterilization or sanitization of food cans in food industries so we know that uh, ozone is a good oxidizing agent and it is 1.5 times stronger than chlorine and therefore it is a uh, effective uh, uh, sanitizing agent in food industries it has got a number of uh, applications in our food industry uh, like for example for uh, uh, sanitization for sterilization for decontamination of food cans and for surface uh, sterilization and for the removal of pests for uh, disinfection of water so it has got a number of applications and it is also used for the sterilization of food packaging material so ozone has got a good number of applications in food industry next question it's a match the following type question so here two groups are being given group 1 and group 2 and you have to match which uh, uh, terms belong to the uh, term of from the other group and the uh, terms are per synergesis soya bean lemon for the other side we have jelly essential amino acid neural saponin and lycopene so to answer this question let's first understand various terms for which we may be unfamiliar so we will be going through all the different terms and then we will come to the answer uh, how we have to match if we start with per so per stands for protein efficiency ratio it is one of the easiest method to assess the quality of protein so in this ratio we measure uh, gain in body weight per protein which is being consumed so like if we are consuming a certain amount of protein so how much uh, body weight we are gaining for that particular protein intake so that ratio gives us protein efficiency uh, ratio and uh, for casein uh, the value is 2.5 and this is being taken as a standard value and then we compare the protein efficiency ratio of different foods with this particular standard value and then we decide which particular food is having high protein efficiency ratio and which one is having lower here you can refer to this uh, table also which will give you a good insight over this so beef peanut egg wheat gluten soya protein etc are having a high protein efficiency ratio and while the milk and whey protein are having lesser next uh, next term we were having was synergesis so synergesis uh, before going to synergesis let's first understand what exactly is jelly so you all must have like uh, eaten or have taken jellies so jelly is a uh, gel like structure which is being uh, made by boiling the fruit uh, juice and adding sugar and pectin to it so there is a theory which uh, describes how the gel like structure in a jelly forms so the theory is fibril theory so according to this theory uh, when we add sugar to a pectin solution it destabilizes the pectin water equilibrium and due to that the pectin forms a 3d like structure so a simple theory it is so when you add sugar to the pectin solution the pectin gets destabilized and it forms a 3d like structure a, uh, a network like structure and in that network like structure the water molecules are get holded up so that is how a gel like structure gets formed so but there are certain instances where this gel like structure can be disturbed and one such defect is synergesis so in this what happens that the 3d like structure is destabilized and the water molecules which were being trapped inside the 3d like structure they get oozed out they get released out from the 3d like structure and that is why it is also known as weeping of jelly so the jelly loses the water here in this picture also you can see the gel will lose out its uh, water and that is known as synergesis or weeping of a gel so it is a kind of defect in uh, jelly like products next term which we were having in the list was neural so neural is a compound which is being uh, present in essential oils of certain uh plant species like lemon so it is a natural ingredient 
uh, in lemon uh, related family and it is being used in cosmetics foods and beverages because it is having a strong lemon aroma and flavor so this is about nera so these were the term from this group which might be unfamiliar uh, to some of you so we have discussed them and now maybe it is easy for you to match so per that is protein efficiency ratio is related to essential amino acids synergesis to jelly soya bean to saponin we know saponin is a uh, uh, anti nutritional factor which is present in soya bean and lemon to neral so this is the correct uh, match sequence next question maize is deficient in and the various amino acids are given lysine methionine tryptophan and cysteine so just now in some uh, previous question we have discussed about protein complete protein incomplete protein essential amino acids non essential amino acids so there i have uh, described that the cereals are basically incomplete protein because they are lacking some or the other essential amino acid so here now you have to find out that maize is deficient in which of the following essential amino acids so the right answer is option a and c so maize is deficient in lysine and tryptophan next question which of the following is not a clarifying agent and the options are potassium sorbate diatomaceous earth alum and gelatin so the answer to this question is option a that is potassium sorbate so potassium sorbate is not a clarifying agent it is not used in the process of clarification but the other options that are diatomaceous earth alum gelatin they all are clarifying agents and have got their uh, uses in clarification process so let's first understand what exactly is clarification before moving on to the next question so clarification is a important step in beverage industry so here the suspended particles be it fibers pectin seeds tissues or any other suspended particles they are removed from the uh, beverage and this process is known as clarification there are a number of ways which are used in a food industry for this purpose so i have cited some of the important uh, methods so the one is straining or screening the most easiest one we we also do at our home when we uh, extract the juice and then we strain that using a sieve so that is one of the most basic method so with this we usually uh, remove higher bigger particles or fibers or broken seeds and other particles like that then the other process is decantation so in the in this process we just leave our uh, uh, juice uh, for us uh, undisturbed for some time and the heavier particles get settled down and then we just uh, decant or just uh, remove uh, the uh, upper liquid so that is free from any suspended particles then other is centrifugation we all know in centrifugation uh, using the centrifugal action or the centrifugal force we remove the suspended particles then we are having various enzymes like for pectin we use pectinase and uh, there are other number of protein protein uh, acting enzymes as well which we use so they act upon those uh, particles they uh, they get solubilized and give a clear appearance to our beverage then we are having physical fining agents and the physical fining agents are example are diatomaceous earth bentonite china clay etc so they absorb the uh, particles and th thus give a clear appearance to the juice then we are having chemical fining agents where the examples are gelatin and casein then we can also go for the uh, clarification by freezing and or by heating or by addition of sugar so there are various number of methods by which the clarification process can be performed next question what is the curing temperature of cheese and the options are minus 5 degree celsius 16 degree celsius 25 degree celsius 37 degree celsius so we know that curing is one of the most important uh, step in uh, cheese production and the temperature for curing is 16 degree celsius so curing of cheese is also known as aging and this is one of the most important step in cheese manufacturing because this is the step where that particular aroma that particular flavor of cheese gets developed because the raw cheese is not having that uh, distinct flavor and aroma but because of this curing or aging process that 
uh, acceptable aroma and that flavor gets generated so basically this is the stage where there is a microbial activity on the cheese and due to these the microbial metabolism helps in the aroma and flavor formation and the various flavor compounds and aroma compounds uh, get uh, produced during this step and that is uh, how the the distinct flavor and aroma of a cheese uh, gets developed du during this curing or aging process next question dole process is the example of so the right answer is option a that is heat cool and fill so dole process is a sterilization process which is being performed in food industries so in this the material is being uh, heated up to a temperature and then that is hold it for that particular time and then just cool down and then it is filled or packaged in the packaging material so this is the process next question class of trans fat present in meat is oleic acid arachidonic acid vicinic acid eicosapentaenoic acid so the right answer is option c vicinic acid uh, vicinic acid is a natural occurring uh, trans fat acid which is present in uh, ruminants and in some of the human dairy products so this is the class of trans fat next question and the last one which of the following is not a soft cheese and the options are being given so you know that a lot number of variety of cheese are being there in our food industries so uh, out of them depending on the moisture content we can uh, classify them as soft cheese semi hard cheese and hard cheese so out of these cheddar cheese is not a soft cheese you know that it is a hard cheese here i have tried to give you a illustration of various cheese uh, bases on the classification of the hardness so here you can see the soft cheese semi soft cheese semi hard cheese and then hard cheese so uh, parmesan and cheddar cheese are the hard cheese and the gouda cheese is semi soft cheese and mozzarella is soft cheese so here i have uh, tried to give you example of each category and also you can see other type of cheese that is blue veined cheese and in blue veined cheese we have already discussed that uh, the presence of blue veins uh, um, have made it named as blue veined cheese and they are uh, example is roquefortine cheese uh, so these are some of the example of cheese so that is uh, it for today's video if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and i will be coming up with more such important questions so please uh, stay tuned and share this with your friends and classmates till then stay safe stay healthy thank you bye